This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about domain and range, and we're going to specifically focus on the square root function. We will discuss three examples. Let's get started. All right, before we jump into the first example, let's just get a basic fact out of the way. That when you take the square root, uh, let's say if I have a really simple function, if I just have the square root of some uh, value, where x could be any value, you know, there's a problem when x is going to be, when x is less than zero. When x is less than zero, you're dealing with, like, let's say, take the square root of negative nine. You cannot take the square root of negative nine. There is no answer in the real values. Sure, there are imaginary answers, but there's no real solution. And we're, we're only looking to find real values here. When you have this value, this expression, when it's equal to zero, sure, you could take the square root. The square root is zero. If you have numbers that are greater than zero, right? If this expression is greater than zero, like let's say four is a perfectly great number greater than zero, there is a square root. Okay, so the only problem that we run into is when this value is less than zero. Okay, so we want to avoid that for our domain. We always want this expression to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's keep that in mind when we're doing these, uh, this example that we're about to see. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slightly change this expression. Let's make it a little bit more interesting for our first example. So I'm going to change this to x plus 4 being the expression that's underneath the square root. Okay, keep in mind, we just saw a moment ago that this expression, whatever it is, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, otherwise we run into issues. So let's solve this. So we see that x, if we subtract 4 from both sides, we see that it's got to be this value x for our, uh, our function has to be greater than or equal to uh, negative 4. Okay, so imagine now you have all the numbers. Well, that's a very bad looking line, but let's just run with it. Uh, let's say we have all these values and they represent all real numbers. We know now that here's negative 4. It can be equal to negative 4. And it can even be greater than negative 4. Okay, so this is what my domain looks like. Okay, so I could see right away that it has to be all the numbers that are uh, greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, how do you write this as an interval? Well, the left side of this interval is at negative 4. Okay, and it's equal to negative 4. So if you remember anything about interval notation, you have to put a little bracket. That means equal. Okay, what's the right side of this? interval. Well, the right side just keeps on going to the right forever. It's unbounded. So we say it's running off to positive infinity. And you can never be equal to infinity. So you put that uh, parenthesis there for the end. Okay, so this is our domain. So I'm going to put domain. And now we have it. Now, to get the range, it's just easier to get the graph of this function. So I'm going to put the graph up here. So this is what the graphing calculator gives us. So the graphing calculator reports this, this shape, and the shape does go on forever. I know it looks like it stops here, but it does go on forever. So imagine that going to the right forever, as we could see. So you can see it goes from negative 4, and it goes to the right forever. All right, now let's look at the y values. So the lowest y value is going to be right there. So where is this point? Well, this point right here is at negative 4, 0. Okay, you can just tell by looking at the graph. Now, if that point is at negative 4, 0, we know that it goes from 0 is our lowest y value, and it goes up forever. So what's the range? Okay, well, the range, well, the lowest value is 0. Oops, almost made a mistake there. It is equal to 0, but then it goes up to positive infinity. And there you go. That's our range. So we get our range by looking at the picture. All right, let's go on to our second example. 
All right, so here's our second example. Here's g of x. We've got 9 minus x squared. Okay, so we've got this uh, expression. In our expression, under the radical, we say it's got to be greater than or equal to 0. And we solve. So we subtract 9. We divide both sides by negative 1. Remember, when you divide by negative 1, it's going to switch the inequality. All right, now we have to solve this. Temporarily, I'm going to make this a, I'm going to make that equal, and uh, look at the equality. So, what values squared are equal to nine? All right. Well, there's only a few of them. There's three and negative three. Those are the only two values when you square them are equal to nine. All right. Now let's look at the case that it's less than or equal to nine. Okay. So let's see. Hmm. Let's figure out which, which of these regions also, or I should say intervals, which of these intervals also work. Let's take zero. That's in this region, the center interval. Sorry, it's an interval. Let's look at the center interval. So let's take zero squared, we get zero. Zero is definitely less than nine. So the values here are all going to work. Okay, so I know my domain has that interval, but let's see the other two intervals. If I take like, let's say four, four squared is 16. Nope, that's not less than 9, so these numbers don't work. How about these numbers? Let's take negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. 25 is not less than 9. These values don't work. All right, so we're just talking about these values. So let's talk about now the interval. What is this as an interval? I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. Eh, I think I could squeeze it in here. So the domain is going to be uh, talking about that interval. It goes from negative 3 to 3. So I'm going to put negative 3, that's 3. And it's equal. That's why I'm putting those brackets. And there you go. So there's the domain. All right, now let's talk about the range. And the only way to get the an idea of the range is really to get a, uh, a picture. So we look at a graphing calculator. All right, so there's the graph. So now to calculate the range, it would really be nice to know some critical values in this graph. Like this point right here is negative 3, 0. This point over here is positive 3, 0. And this point up here is 0, 3. OK, those values really do help when determining the range, those extreme values. All right, what's the lowest this graph gets? I always start with the low end, right? And the lowest this gets is zero at both of these points. So it never dips below the x-axis. It just gets to that zero. So I'd say it's equal to zero. All right, what's the highest it gets in this curve? The highest it gets in this curve is right here. And that y value is three. And there you have it. There's the range, and there's our domain. Let's move on to example three. All right, let's get to our last example, example three. All right, this one's even different still. I'm trying to find three examples that look different. Now again, we take the expression inside the radical, not anything on the outside. We take the inside part, and we say that it has to be greater than or equal to zero for have a defined, having a defined domain. All right, again, just doing a little simple algebra we get 2. So it looks like this one's pretty easy to see. We've got all our x values have to be greater than 2. So here's 2, greater than or equal to 2. So it looks like we've got a pretty simple looking interval for our domain. All right, so our domain has this interval where the leftmost part of the interval is at 2. Oh, I keep making a mistake there but it's equal to 2. And at the right side, it goes off, trails off to infinity. But you're never equal to infinity. All right, so that's a pretty simple domain to get to. Let's talk about the range. To do that, we need a picture. Now, the graph of the function is helpful because it's going to help us determine the range. All right, how do we do it? Well, let's look at first this point right here. 
which is at 2, 0. Uh, again, the curve goes down and right forever. That's helpful. So what's the lowest y value? Well, if this curve keeps going down forever, and it is, it's going down and right forever, the lowest value is going to be negative infinity. Okay, that's the lowest the curve gets. It just keeps going down and down and down. Now, what's the highest y value it gets to? The highest y value is 0, and it's actually equal to 0. And there you have it. We've got the range. We've got the domain. All right, that's all there is to these square root functions. Now, if you go back to mathguide.com to check out our other uh, text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Take care.